998, 999, 1000. Oh, hey, welcome back to Ask the Energy Advisor. I'm your energy advisor, Brian Hawk, Noble REMC. Sorry you caught me in the middle of working out here, but when I'm not pumping iron, I like to talk about pumping heat. And with that in mind, let me finish my workout and we'll get to our next video. One thousand one. One thousand. So what is a heat pump? A heat pump is basically an air conditioner with a reversing valve. So we've had air conditioning for years and years and years. Heat pumps have been around for a long time also. Um, but a heat pump has a, the reversing valve in it. And what that means is we're going to move heat from either outside to inside, or we're going to move heat from inside to outside. And that's all done through the refrigeration process. In one direction, we're gonna compress a gas, it's gonna absorb heat, and we're either going to extract that to the outside, or we're going to move gas, absorb heat, and take that from outside to inside. It's going to utilize your same air handler that your either furnace or electric furnace, whatever you have, that's, that's what you're going to use. The air is going to blow across that coil and move the heat. Um, there are three pretty much distinct heat pumps. You've got a uh, ground source, which is more commonly referred to as a geothermal. You have a ducted, which I would call a traditional heat pump. That's the one that's going to look more like an air conditioner. Usually you can tell them apart from an air conditioner with a slight eight inch foot on the bottom of it on a platform. And then we have the what we'll call the new style is the ductless heat pump. And that's basically what we have right here. You're seeing the indoor cartridge of a ductless heat pump. The nice thing about these ductless heat pumps is they don't require um, duct work. They have the ability to use duct work, but they do not require duct work. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and head outside and take a look at what this heat pump looks like from the outside. Okay, so we're out here standing in front of the actual ductless uh, compressor, condenser. Um, again, this pairs with the cassette we just looked at up there in the ceiling. Um, really nice thing about this, this unit itself is it's virtually noise free. Now right now it's not running so we really can't hear much at all, but even when it's running at full speed it's very quiet. Um, we're going to back up just a little bit. Uh, We'll go back to ground source geo. Where can you, where's a good place to install ground source geo <clears throat> or ground source heat pump geothermal? Uh, they work really well in new homes because you can design a new home to incorporate that geo. Um, you're going, the new homes of today, they're built more airtight, they're insulated better, the better windows. So that's where geos really shine. Um, you're gonna need duct work if you want a traditional style geo or they actually make a geo where you can do radiant floor heat and utilize the ductwork for air conditioning. So Geo is pretty versatile um, with a proper application. Uh, they can go in existing homes as long as you have ductwork there. The problem with existing homes is I don't want you to think you can just throw a Geo in there and start saving a bunch of money. If your home is leaky, meaning energy leaky and the windows are bad, you know, ductwork has leaks, a Geo is not going to save you the kind of money you think it's going to save you. So I caution if a contractor comes in and says, hey, let's just throw a Geo in there, it's going to save you money. Um, might not be a bad idea to get a second estimate. Uh, the traditional air source heat pump, it's very similar to the Geo. It doesn't really have a radiant floor option, but you're gonna need duct work. Um, <clears throat> it can be designed to go in new homes. You can pair it with an LP furnace or a natural gas furnace if you wanted to use the uh, air source heat pump as a primary. And I would say, you know, let's just talk about LP because we're rural. Uh, you could use your LP or your, or your uh, propane furnace as a secondary. So today's heat pumps are made to, to produce quite a bit of heat down to pretty cold temperatures. So the days of saying heat pumps don't work in Indiana, that's gone. You know, that's don't, don't listen to that. Um, the beauty of this guy right here, this is the most efficient of the air source heat pumps. And part of that is because they don't use duct work or they don't require duct work. So what we have here with the cassette we had, this is be a true ductless system. So it's using the refrigerant lines right here and it's just pumping right up into that cassette we saw up there. That really minimizes our energy loss because it's completely insulated and we're just moving refrigerant. 
beauty of this system is it can also be ducted. If you have um, a chopped up house, whether it's a new or a retrofit, and you wanna utilize the mini split technology, you can, you can put cartridges in one area and then they have mini ducts in other areas or you can actually pair this with an air handler. So this is out of the air source version, this is definitely the most versatile of the two. So the really nice thing about these, um, again, we'll go back to the cold climate. We're looking for the cold climate status either in this one or the traditional. This guy right here is rated, it's gonna put out uh, I believe it's 95 to 100% of its capacity down to zero degrees, and then you're gonna get diminishing capacities from zero down to negative 13, but it's still going to produce heat at negative 13 degree outdoor temperature. So you can see it's pretty, pretty good piece of equipment. When you're looking at buying, uh, whether it's a ground source or an air source, um, starting with an air source, you wanna look at the SEER rating and the HSPF. <clears throat> SEER rating is a seasonal, seasonal energy efficiency ratio, and the HSPF is a heating season performance factor. The higher of those two numbers is the more efficient and the more heat you're going to get out of it. Um, we have power moves rebates available for all three of the, the types that we've talked about on the air source. We need at least 16 SEER and nine HSPF. Um, what that does is that gets you into a two-stage piece of equipment. So when you don't need a lot of heat or cooling, it's gonna operate on a lower level. When you do need a lot of heat or cooling, it's gonna operate at a higher level. And that's how you save some more energy with it. On the ground source of the GEO, we're gonna talk about EER and COP. And the EER is the energy efficiency ratio similar to the air source, and the COP is the coefficient of performance. The reason it's called the EER in the GEO is we're using groundwater, and groundwater stays um, a lot more stable, a lot more flat line, 52, 58 degrees on open loop. Closed loop, it's, it's somewhat determined by the extended temperatures of, of the surroundings. So the higher the EER in that, the more efficient it's going to be. The COP is the coefficient of performance. That gives us the uh, geo, a typical geo is gonna start about four COP. That means it's 400% efficient. So as you can see, that's gonna be a pretty efficient piece of equipment to operate. Um, again, the higher the numbers in those, the more efficient it's going to be. Great thing about Geo is they've got one out there now that we're up in the 40 SEER and a little over five COP. So if you can imagine a 500% a efficient, efficient piece of equipment in heating season, that's pretty incredible. So just to wrap things up, I wanted to try and give you an idea of, you know, really the true versatility of a mini split. We're here in a bonus room um, in the front of a garage. So this is a conditioned space. On the other side of these doors is the garage. We've got the mini split head up here running off of that same outdoor unit. We've got a mini split unit upstairs. Um, they really do shine just about anywhere you want to put them. So just being line sets running to a cartridge, the, the possibilities are endless. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to talk to you about any sort of heat pump, ground source, mini split, or traditional. Just give me a call. Again, thanks for joining us for our videos. Brian Hawk, Energy Advisor at Noble REMC.